Round one, I would say, went pretty well for the Arizona Cardinals last night. They get Hollywood Brown. And uh, joining us right now on the 72 Sold Sports Line is their general manager, Steve Keim. Steve, uh, thank you for the uh, the time today. I know you're busy with the draft and everything. I, I have to assume you're pretty happy with the way last night played out. Yes, sir. Uh, all of us excited over here. Cardinals headquarters are uh, extremely excited. Had the opportunity to visit with uh, Marquise uh, over the last 24 hours, and uh, it's been a been a great opportunity to get to know him a little bit better. Got to know him throughout the uh, evaluation process and all the time that we spent on Kyler Murray coming out. Um, and again, just uh, thrilled to be able to uh, you know land a guy with his uh, skill set, his capability. The fact that he has done it at a high level already is. Uh, Uh, extremely encouraging for us. Steve, how long have you been working on this? Can you give us a bit of a timeline in terms of when this all came together? I can't, you know, I, it's, it's been quite some time, um, but I don't want to get into the specifics of it just to, you know, really say that I, I, uh, when you look at the big picture of it all, you know, I think it really materialized uh, the night before the draft. Uh, my conversations with Eric DaCosta, their general manager, who I've had a great relationship for a number of years, so it makes it a little bit easier to make those kind of trades, and I think it was a win-win for both organizations. Was the plan always just to be able to get a more experienced player? Like you got a young player that still has upside, but you also know what you're going to get in week one when he steps in. You know, that's a good question. I, I think that it's it's trusting your board, and uh, the, the closer we got to the draft, and as we continued to build this board and uh, evaluate the, the current players uh, in this draft, it, it just gave me more reason to believe that the way this board could potentially fall, uh, we'd be sitting there at 23 and not have as many options as w- that we would be excited about. So to be able to acquire a player who has had the production and has done it, who is still also on his rookie contract and in a controlled situation, um, was again very appealing to us. And then the fact that he has the chemistry with our quarterback is obviously icing on the cake. What will Hollywood Brown do for this offense, Steve? Well, it, it's probably going to be a little bit like a track meet, Wolf. It's, it's going to open some things up because when you talk about his ability to play inside now, which was also key, you know, a lot of times in today's day and age, these guys can either play the slot or they can play X or Z. He's played it all. He's played X, he's played Z, he's played slot, and he does it all extremely well. A lot of times those slender, smaller guys that can play outside, it's because of a reason, which is their foot speed and their explosiveness. And there's no doubt that Hollywood Brown brings that deep threat ability. So uh, he'll he'll move Cliff will move him around. He'll have him used in a number of different ways. Uh, run after the catch ability is tremendous, and again his ability to take the top off the defense to me is second to none. So now all of a sudden you throw him in there with a guy like Rondale and Hop and the things that AJ can do, and then you throw in Zach Ertz to the mix, and we all know that what James Conner can do in the passing game. So a number of weapons for at Kyler's disposal, and I think that uh, he's uh, obviously very excited as well. Talking to Cardinals general manager uh, Steve Keim. Steve, you, you said, you kind of threw it in there as, as icing on the cake that him and Kyler already have a really good relationship. But specifically at those positions, that's that's a pretty nice bonus that your quarterback and your wide receiver are, are not, they're not meeting each other for the first time. They're being reunited. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, I don't care whether it's the chemistry or the communication that they had in college with signals and, and um, different route combinations or it's things that they do well together. Uh, I just found out that they've been working together in Dallas, throwing. And, uh, you know, again, uh, I think that when you know where the receiver is going to be, the landmark that he's going to be at, all those different things is, is such a um, – uh, such a big deal, you know, in terms of ball placement and the ability to run after the catch. And I think that, you know, he's, it's a safety net for Kyler as well, a guy that he knows where he's going to be on the field and uh, obviously trusts that. Has Hollywood Brown ever played with a wide receiver that is the likes of a DeAndre Hopkins, Steve, in your opinion? No, I don't think so, Wolf. And, and I think not only that, but um, and, and then it's not a knock on, on the uh, Baltimore Ravens because they are an obviously um, successful franchise that I have a lot of respect for, but just they're, they're built schematically much different than us, you know, not as spread out, uh, run the ball uh, predominantly more. Uh, and in our offense, you know, with uh, the number of wide receiver screens, the ability to isolate players in space, uh, really think it fits Hollywood's skill set. So excited to see what he can do in this offense, and Cliff is really excited as well. I know the draft's still going, so you, you can't give away too much here, but I have to think when you look at your team and you look at the skill position guys you have on offense, if you had, if the season was starting tomorrow, you would probably be pretty confident with that group. Feel really good. Feel really good. Could probably go for a short, stubby uh, fullback from West Virginia. <laughs> Aside from that, I think we're pretty good. <laughs> 
<laughs> Steve, on that note right there, honestly, how did this this year's first-round talent shape up compared to other first-round talent in the past? Yeah, quite frankly, and no disrespect to the players in this draft, you know, I, I didn't see a huge separation between um, – say the top 10 picks and and um, you know the middle to, to, to later part of the first round I think there's a number of players uh, still up there right now that could have potentially been first round picks in this draft so um, you know I think there's a lot of good solid players I just uh, maybe did not see a, a lot of special talent in this draft in terms of uh, rare and unusual players that maybe that I would have graded in the past at a higher level. You know, going back to the relationship with Kyler, I, what has his reaction been like? They obviously have the good off the field and working out together. I mean, do you, <laughs> I know you can't say too much about contract status, but I, I, that has to help down the line. Well, you know, I and again, I, I felt confident and have remained confident all along that Kyler wants to be here, and it's just the, the necessary part of the business that you have to work out. But he um, he's been excited, and you know, I think I said last night in the press conference, I got uh, a number of fireballs text to me once we uh, made the trade, which was extremely difficult because I couldn't tell him uh, I made a commitment to the Ravens that we would not let it get out, and stuck with that. So it was it was tough. I'm not going to lie to you, and and um, you know, again, just to see how excited Kyler. Was, was 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 certainly a pleasure of mine and and I know it's certainly um you know excited a number of players in our locker room already JJ and Zach Ertz and some of the guys downstairs has already have already made some comments Steve flip it over and look at the defensive side of the ball right now uh, a lot of people including cardinal fans that are out there right now a little concerned about the edge are you concerned about the edge well I'm always concerned wolf because that's my job I mean I I look at our team, and, and, and just when I think we have enough talent, I always have to uh, you know, press myself to do a better job in terms of building depth and uh, depth at every position. So uh, you never know where your injuries are going to come from. You can't forecast that. So that's always tough. You, can't, you just can't have enough good football players. So regardless of what positions we take moving forward, we can't press and, and, and take a guy that's in a different category just because of a specific need. That, that I know. Um, so hopefully there will be a player that falls to us that can do some of those things that we talked about, whether it's rush the passer uh, or play on the edge. So uh, you obviously can never have enough corners. We know that. Um, but the, the pass rushers are, are really tough to find. Talking to Cardinals GM Steve Kime, kind of lost in the shuffle of that trade. You give up pick number 23, you get Hollywood Brown back, but you also get a late third-round pick, too. How important was that to you to get a pick in the middle of the draft where you didn't necessarily have a lot before? Yeah, I mean, it's always always good. And, and again, I think uh, whether it's uh, sitting tight at that pick or it's packaging that and going up or even potentially moving back into the fourth round and acquiring another pick, um, there's a ton of options. And, again, it'll come down to our board and, and trusting um, sort of what the numbers are and uh, what what's left in the uh, round. But, you know, again, any, any time that you have more opportunities to select, the better chance you have to succeed. Steve, can you go ahead and just characterize uh, the, the extension talks right now with Kyler Murray and – the relationship between Kyler Murray and the Cardinals, where do you see it at? Yeah, I mean, I, as far as I, I, I'm concerned, Wolf, I, I think it's it's fine. I, I, you know, don't don't disrespect the fact that everybody wants uh, paid in this business. That's how it, it works. We know that. Um, and obviously respect the player and his, his position. But at the same time, um, I made it clear that I wanted to get through this spring with the free agency and the draft process and that we would refocus and reset. And uh, nothing has changed. Has this offseason been a little bit different for you guys? I mean, just the last two years you've been hyper-aggressive, and now last night kind of changes everything when you bring in a guy like uh, like, uh, Hollywood Brown. But, I mean, for – through free agency, you guys were a little bit quiet, and yet now this is three years in a row where you've made a pretty big splash? Yeah, I mean, I, and I think that, um, you know, you have to pick your spots when you're in my position. It's uh, don't want to be careless and, and want to make sure that we have the best uh, for the organization. And, and again, that comes down to, to, to believing in your instincts and pulling the trigger on things that you're confident in. Um, when you look at free agency and you look at players that uh, in the past have made uh, more than $10 million uh, during that um, time period, uh, the hit rate is very low. It's in the 30% range. And I'm talking about a threshold that's making them a solid starter for years to come. And analytics, analytics proves that, prove that. So to me, that's somewhat fool's gold. Um, so you can go out there and spend all the money you can. It doesn't mean you're going to build a good team. Um, we've had a lot of success with some of the trades that we've made that we've been aggressive with, and we'll continue to do that if we believe in it, which was one last night. Steve, can you tell us a little bit? Give me a scouting report in regard to Jeff Gladney. 
Jeff Gladney is a um, very, very talented corner, uh, former first-round pick, played quite a bit as a rookie. I think he played in uh, 14 games, started in, in, in a ton of them. Uh, Mike Zimmer is a very tough defensive coach and knows defensive backs well. Zimmer is very high on him. He's a tackler. He's physical. Mm. He's very twitchy and explosive in his movements. Wolf, he's got very good mirrorability for a corner. We really liked him coming out of TCU. And um, obviously uh, have done our homework on him and feel very comfortable with the player moving forward. Adding him to that, that corner room, I mean, it's it's obviously a young room, but you do now have with Antonio Hamilton back and, and the way Marco Wilson played last year and Byron Murphy. Are, are you feel pretty good about that room, or you, would you still like to add more? I mean, I always want to add more corners, but at the same time, feel good about the guys in that room. Uh, obviously, Hamilton did a very nice job for us last year when we picked him up later in the uh, training camp period. Um, but, you know, you're starting to look at that group now as they were younger guys, but now all of a sudden, Buda Baker has become a seasoned vet and a great leader. Uh, Jalen Thompson, to me, is one of the better safeties in the National Football League. And uh, the communication between those two and the corners is, is obviously very important and have a lot of confidence in that group and think they're only going to get better moving forward. Steve, looking at your offense and the pieces that you have of your offense this year, do you think you're going to be more physical this year or more finesse this year? You know, I'd like to think we're going to be more physical, Wolf, and I think that, that we've become more physical every year uh, since Cliff's been here, and that's been one of the things that we've tried to do. Um, now, I know it doesn't always work that way, but you know, the first half of the season last year, when you look back and you see the way we ran the football effectively, and that set up everything else. You know, we know that needs to be um, you know, imperative for us to, to have that balance. And I think that we'll get back to that this year, and we'll continue to make some changes and grow together. But really, really excited uh, about the future here and feel like we have a lot of pieces uh, to excite our fans. Hey, Steve, you know what? Good luck. God bless you. And uh, we hope it goes well for you over the next couple of days. Thanks, man. Appreciate you having me. Thank you, Steve. It's uh, Steve Keim joining us right there on the 72 Sold Sports Line. Get your price at 72sold.com. Well, he said a lot that I want to react to, too. We've got a lot of of guests that have given us a lot to react to today, but... uh, did he give you the answer you wanted on the physical or finesse? Uh, yes, as okay. a matter of fact, it is going to be more physical. Makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Well, I mean, if you want if you want validation of that theory, the best place to get it from is probably the GM or the coach, right? Yes. And you just got it from the GM. 